You know, when you sent over those articles about Bethany Joy Lenz, I was uh, I was immediately intrigued. Like, I think a lot of us know her from her acting career, but you wanted to like really dig into her personal life, specifically um, what she's calling her experiences with this high control group. Yeah, and it's intense stuff. It feels heavy just saying it out loud. It is, and I think um, you know a good starting point for us would be to look at how Lenz herself describes her marriage. She actually uses the words arranged situation uh -huh. and talks about this really limited dating pool, essentially being able to only date within this specific Christian group. Okay, so arranged situation, those are that's a pretty loaded phrase. When you hear that, what does that even mean in this context? Right, well, think about the expectations yeah. and the kind of pressures that can exist within a community like that, yeah. especially around something as personal as who you can date, who you can marry. There's often such a strong emphasis on you know, finding a partner from within the group. Mm -hmm. And to go against that can mean facing judgment resistance, even exclusion from the community. So there's okay. a lot at stake. Wow. So you're saying it's almost like those external pressures become a huge deciding factor in your choices about love and relationships. Absolutely. It's not that, you know, individual choices don't exist within those communities, but you've got this whole other layer of complexity to navigate. And, you know, that kind of leads us to Lens talking about feeling very disillusioned in her marriage, especially when it came to intimacy. Yeah, she really opens up about this gap between her expectations going in and then what she actually experienced, which I think is something that a lot of people can relate to, even outside of a situation like this. Like, we all have these ideas about what a relationship should be. Exactly. And, you know, that that dissonance between expectation and reality. It's especially interesting, I think, within a system that often really idealizes marriage and, frankly, often minimizes female pleasure. Mm. So, you know, it speaks to this much larger conversation about how women's needs and desires are often stifled, you know, especially in environments with very rigid beliefs about relationships. And it sounds like for Lens, that tension was amplified because of the community she was in. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine, you know, you're already dealing with this pressure to suppress your own needs, your own desires, to conform to this kind of idealized version of marriage. And then you layer on top of that this feeling that you can't even really talk about it openly. It's a lot to carry. And this is where things take even more, like a really heavy turn. Lentz actually reveals that she and her then-husband had this sex schedule. Oh, wow. I'm just, I'm floored even saying that out loud. Yeah. Um, because it just feels so at odds with this idea of intimacy being something that's mutual and fulfilling and, you know, chosen. Yeah, it really kind of throws into sharp relief the mechanics of control that are often at play in these situations. Like you said, we're not talking about, you know, open communication, shared desire. This is about obligation. Wow. It's about control. And frankly, it can be incredibly damaging, especially in the long run. Absolutely. And Lens actually uses the word duty when describing it, yeah. which is just heartbreaking, you know, to hear someone talk about their experience within a marriage in those terms. And the thing is, it wasn't just something that she could just, you know, leave behind when the marriage ended. She actually talks about this, how it left her with a kind of PTSD even years later. Yeah, that's what's so interesting about this is it shows just how deep the impact of these types of experiences can be. Even when you've physically left a controlling environment, the emotional scars, the emotional baggage that comes with that, it can linger, and it often shows up in ways that we don't expect. Right. Like, she mentions this very specific thing about being triggered by picking up future partners from the airport. Wow. And it made me realize, it's such a, like, a random specific example, but it makes you realize that healing from those types of emotional wounds, it's not linear. It's a journey. And it's not as simple as, you know, just flipping a switch and moving on. Exactly. It's yeah. not like that. And, you know, this control that Lens is describing it, it, it wasn't just, you know, confined to her personal life. It starts to bleed into her career choices as well. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Like giving up on some pretty major career opportunities, if I'm remembering correctly. Didn't she walk away from playing Belle on Broadway? She did. That's a huge role to walk away from. So what was going on there? It's wild to think about, like, walking away from a dream role like that. It is. It really highlights how powerful this hold was that this group had on her life. You know, yeah. here she is, this talented actress, mm -hmm. and even her career choices were entangled with their expectations. Yeah. And it wasn't just Belle on Broadway. She turned down film auditions, two big ones. It makes you think, you know, how many of us are out there making choices based on what we think we should do, even if deep down it doesn't feel right? It's a question worth asking ourselves, that's yeah. for sure. And, you know, with Lynn specifically, she talks about coming to this realization that her success, her independence, it was actually perceived as a threat by this group. The more she achieved on her own terms, the less control they had over her life. It's a messed up dynamic when you think about it. Like, you're supposed to shrink yourself and your accomplishments to maintain their status quo. Yeah. 
And that's sadly not uncommon in these types of environments. There's this pressure to conform to not rock the boat. Sure. And when someone starts to step outside of those carefully constructed boundaries, it can definitely be met with resistance. So where does that leave us then? We've covered a lot, the arranged marriage, the sex schedule, her career being impacted. It feels like a lot to unpack. It is, but I think Lentz's story really highlights the importance of awareness. You know, recognizing when external pressures are influencing our choices, even in really subtle ways. It's about learning to identify those controlling dynamics and advocating for our own needs and desires, even when it's hard. Yeah. And it's not just these really intense situations, right? This happens in everyday life, too. Those moments when we silence ourselves or shrink back out of fear of judgment or rocking the boat. Absolutely. So it really begs the question, am I living in alignment with my own values and desires? And if not, what needs to change? That's a powerful question and a great place to leave it for our listeners. Thank you so much for taking this deep dive with me today. And to everyone listening, we know this was heavy stuff, but we hope you found it insightful. Until next time, keep asking those tough questions and stay true to yourselves.